All right, let's take a look at these examples. So here you can see that you have phosphoric acid and you have water. All right, phosphoric acid is not one of our six strong acids, so it does exist in equilibrium. We can also identify this taking a look at left and right, and we can find the proton transfer within it. Notice that you have H3PO4 on the left-hand side, H2PO4 with a 1 minus charge. You can see that this species here has lost a hydrogen. Follow water, H2O, turns into H3O plus when we look at the left to right reaction, and you can see that water has gained said proton. So on the forward reaction, the H plus has gone this way. Therefore, this is your Bronsted-Lowry acid because it was the proton donor, and water in this case is your Bronsted-Lowry base because it accepted it. Let's take a look at the reverse, and it should be just a conjugate or reciprocal reaction. If I start with H3O+, you can see that it turns into H2O. If I start with H2PO4-1-, it turns into H3PO4, and it's neutral. So you can see in the reverse reaction that your H plus goes this way. And so hydronium very obviously is an acid and your dihydrogen phosphate ion is your base. Okay. In the next one here, we still have another reaction with water. You'll be able to follow this one, but this one is a basic reaction. So let's take a look at what's happening when we uh, examine our two reactants, you can see you have carbonate ion and you have water, but on the other side of the reaction you have bicarbonate ion, or hydrogen carbonate ion, and hydroxide. So notice your carbonate species. One doesn't have a hydrogen, one does. This means that this guy here must have accepted a hydrogen, making it a base. Follow water. Water has two hydrogens beforehand, the remnant here is hydroxide, it has lost a hydrogen, and so we can see that in this basic reaction, the hydrogen has been taken from water, making water the Bronsted-Lowry acid in this case. In the reverse reaction, we'll just analyze that one quickly, you can see that bicarbonate has given up one, so bicarbonate is giving its hydrogen to hydroxide, and so that means the donor here is bicarbonate, the acceptor is hydroxide, and that should math, uh, match with our uh, concept of how hydroxide works. Hydroxide is the basic quantity, and in this particular reaction we can see that it is the uh, hydrogen acceptor, therefore it fits the definition. Where Bronsted-Lowry really helps us out is in some of these further reactions. When we take a look at these ones here, we can see no water is involved. This was the biggest flaw with the Arrhenius and modified Arrhenius definitions, is that water was a necessary participant in the reactions. Bronsted-Lowry now takes us further, and we can see acids and bases, or acidic and basic solutions, that don't necessarily involve the water molecule. Here you have phosphoric acid, and you have the carbonate ion. Follow and take a look at your products, and you can see the phosphoric acid remnant here is dihydrogen phosphate, meaning this guy here has lost a hydrogen. Therefore, phosphoric acid is our hydrogen donor, or our proton donor, and is therefore the acid. We can confirm this by taking a look at carbonate ion, which becomes bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate ion, on the product side. You can see that it is accepted and gained a hydrogen, so our proton acceptor, or our base, is carbonate in the forward reaction. Yes guys, it is this simple, you're just looking for a hydrogen moving. The Bronsted-Lowry concept is a wonderfully simplified idea for identifying acid and base. We should see a reciprocal reaction then on the reverse side. If I have bicarbonate and it becomes carbonate, and my hydrogen has gone this way in a reverse reaction, making this my Bronsted-Lowry acid as the proton donor, and my dihydrogen phosphate has to be the base. We'll do one more here together, guys. We'll take a look at uh, a quantitative reaction here. 
between hydrochloric acid and ammonia to produce ammonium chloride. All right. In this one, because hydrochloric acid is by definition a strong acid, we should not see an equilibrium and it is quantitative, which means no equilibrium system, no K, you just have a one-way reaction. All right, HCl reacts with our ammonia here. You can see that in the compound that is formed, ammonia has gained a hydrogen from HCl and so there's my proton transfer. This is most definitely my acid. This is my base. Okay, so there you go. That is a few examples on bronze lowry acid base and just identifying them. What we can see in the examples above, and this is uh, an important idea here, is that water, when we take a look at the first two reactions, is amphoteric, or the more popular term, amphiprotic, which means that the proton can be accepted or donated. We see it uh, acting as a base in the first reaction, but we see it acting as an acid in the second reaction. Do you guys remember from electrochemistry that water was a potential OA and RA because it exists on both sides of the table? Well, that was the electron transfer, so it kind of makes sense that water can produce hydronium or hydroxide by being a proton donor or proton acceptor. This again also matches what we see with water's equilibrium statement and having some charged products or charged ions uh, in its solution. So water is amphiprotic, it can act as an acid or a base in certain reactions. And then we also see from this particular definition of bronsted lowry that water does not have to be a participant. And this goes beyond what we see for the uh, modified Arrhenius definition. So bronsted lowry is a nice idea, it's very simplified, and in some cases we also see the reciprocal within those equilibrium reactions but all you're doing here is looking for where the H plus is going, which is really quite similar to what we did in electrochemistry when we were tracking where the electron was going. Exchanging electron is really not too dissimilar from exchanging an H plus proton. Okay, so there you go. That's the first part here for Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. We will get into uh, more of this in the next lesson where we start taking a look at the five-step method to predict an acid-base reaction.